So Happy New Year, everybody. We are celebrating 100 subscribers. Uh, we were hoping to do that by January 1st, and we just pulled it off on New Year's Eve, 101 subscribers. So thank you very, very much for subscribing to the channel. We're glad you're enjoying it. And we're gonna share a bottle of sparkling grape juice to celebrate. You guys ready? You got your cups ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah! going to be a little flat. <laughs> Cheers everyone. Thank you and happy new year. Happy new year. Whether you know us in our day-to-day -day life or through YouTube, we truly appreciate you subscribing. To show how much that means to us, we would like you to choose our next adventure. Would you rather us fly to Crystal River, Florida, where we can search for manatees? Or would you rather us fly to Charleston, South Carolina? Comment down below and tell us your choice. And if you have any suggestions for activities, hotels, or restaurants, we would love to hear from you. In this video, AJ will do an overview of the plane, the avionics, and the cameras we use. We have added chapters to this video, so if you would like to skip around, hover over the progress bar, and you will be able to see the different sections. So a few of you have asked us to do a video about, uh, about our plane itself, uh, about the avionics that are inside the plane, about why we chose an Aztec versus some of the alternatives. Uh, so for today's video, we're just gonna do an overview of the important things about this particular plane, um, how it differs from a typical Aztec, and what the avionics are within the plane. So <clears throat> when I was considering getting an airplane, you know, it's important to consider what your mission is. Uh, for us, the most important thing is to get back and forth over water, uh, both within Florida and to and from the Bahamas and the Caribbean with a minimum of risk. Um, speed is important, but uh, more important to us is the ability to get to our destination over some inhospitable terrain. So a twin does give you the option to uh, continue on if you're caught over water with an engine failure. And so there's plenty of uh, detractors um, and supporters for having a twin, but if your mission involves over water flights routinely, a twin makes sense. So that really narrows down the list to uh, just a few planes that are capable of going over water and with a decent useful load. But the, the four planes that most people consider are a Beach Baron, a Piper Seneca, a Piper Aztec, and a Cessna 310 uh, within the, uh, the light twin family. So long and short of it is, why did we go with an Aztec? Uh, we went with an Aztec, number one, because it has a very generous, useful load. So we can put fuel, full fuel inside the tanks, uh, which is 176 gallons, uh, and still be able to put 600 pounds worth of people and uh, luggage within the plane uh, and not be exceeding our, um, our maximum useful load. Uh, this is a heavy Aztec. Uh, so there are certainly other Aztecs on the market that haul much more than mine does. Uh, but for the upgrades that have been done to this plane, they all come at the expense of weight. This plane is turbocharged. And so uh, it'll climb up to 25,000 feet and happily cruise along at over 200 knots. Um, we've got oxygen built in, sixth place, uh, when we do want to fly high. But uh, when we need to get over the weather or want to go fast, um, that the ability to climb high with the turbochargers is very useful. On this particular plane, one of the big features is the de-ice capabilities. So we've got heated props, we've got boots, and uh, the boots are on the stabilator, the rudder, and the wings. And then in addition, we've got a, uh, a heated windshield frame. Uh, that's not currently installed because rarely would I need it, but, uh, but we've got it and we can install it if we ever need the DIs for the windshield. Um, the props themselves, also an upgrade uh, done by a previous owner to the tune of over $20,000, but these scrimitar style props 
Um, decrease the noise inside the plane. They're, they're more efficient. Uh, and they do add a couple of knots of speed to the cruise speed, other than looking cool. All right, so another big feature of uh, Piper Aztec uh, is the shape and the size of the wing. It's a forgiving airplane. And so for a low time pilot, in my case, I'm still below 300 hours currently with a less than 100 hours in multi-time. Uh, when I went to buy an airplane, an unforgiving plane or a sporty plane might be a little bit faster, but doesn't give me that same measure of safety. So with an Aztec, uh, it has a full steel cage. It has a massive wing uh, with a shape that's very similar to a Piper Cub. So in regard to the forgiving qualities of this particular airplane. Most of them are coming from the shape and size of the wing, the cage, and, uh, and then also the, uh, the large rudder and tail. So for single engine performance and VMC, having a large tail and a low stall speed uh, also contribute to a relatively good safety record that the Aztec has. Some of you may have noticed this piece right here is not part of the typical Aztec. This is part of the Robertson stall kit, short takeoff and land. What it allows is for better airflow uh, over the wing, reducing the stall speed. The flaps extend 48 degrees and <clears throat> with the Robertson stall kit, uh, these ailerons are converted to flapperons. So when you go to the full flap settings, the flaps extend just, uh, sorry, the ailerons extend just as flaps do. And so you get a much larger surface area and function uh, for how the flaps would function while still maintaining the controllability and usefulness of the aileron. What that does is it dramatically decreases uh, the landing distances and the approach speeds when you're going to short and unimproved strips. So another good thing about the Aztec uh, is the size of the interior. Um, it will comfortably fit four adults and two kids or potentially six smaller adults, depending on how you get them in there. Uh, when I was looking for light twins, one of the biggest considerations was how comfortable is the interior and how do you have to get in? So to be quite frank, having only a single door to get in is the situation for the Aztec. Um, the rear door on a Baron 58 or on a Seneca, it's very nice, but you do have to compromise with the lack of useful load. Uh, in our case, a higher useful load with a relatively young and nimble family, we can get in and out of this plane without any real difficulty. There's an emergency hatch on the opposite side should we ever have to cli climb out of the plane. Compared to the other planes, it's, uh, it's the most cavernous um, of the four light twin options. And uh, even I at 6'2 can climb into the back or middle seat and still have rel relative comfort without my knees being cramped inside. When I got inside of a Baron, uh, which I had considered for six to eight months prior to purchasing this Aztec. Uh, the Baron was just too tight. And um, for a big family, a tall family, uh, it's gonna be difficult to get any additional adults in the back of a Baron in any comfort. So for us, the Aztec made more sense. So for those of you who are in the market for a light twin, I would encourage you to consider a Piper Aztec. It isn't the fastest plane, uh, but it's not the slowest either. So it, the fuel burns a little on the high side. I routinely see around 30 gallons per hour at between 160 and 170 knots. Uh, sometimes just for engine temps, we bump that up to 32 to 34 gallons an hour. So it's a bit thirsty, but if you're looking for a plane that has an excellent and spacious interior, excellent load handling and load hauling characteristics, uh, a forgiving wing shape. It's robust with the oleo struts, a full cage, uh, twin engine performance and safety if you're doing over water flights, excellent VMC and short field performance characteristics. Then consider a Piper Aztec. It, um, it's a nice, big, safe, uh, light twin that will take you and your cargo where you want to be uh, with appropriate trade-offs in fuel and speed. So there's been quite a bit of interest in regard to the avionics in my aircraft. Uh, so for my particular Piper Aztec, uh, I'm going to take a minute and just go over what's installed in regard to equipment and avionics. So on the left side of the panel here and here, 
are the uh, controls and indicators for the autopilot. So in this case, it's a King KFC 200 with flight director. Uh, it's not the most advanced autopilot, but it does a good job with heading, uh, altitude, and will assist uh, with approaches when needed. Here and here, I have redundant L3 Harris ESI 500 uh, standby instruments. Uh, these two instruments have their own sensors. They're mainly here for redundancy in the case of a panel failure elsewhere. And so th what these instruments will provide is airspeed, altitude, slip data, and because they have their own battery power and backup sensors, uh, should I have a failure of the primary or secondary flight displays, um, at least I have the basic flight instruments there that should be able to get me home. There are a couple here and here, USB power ports that are made by Midcontinent. Uh, these provide power for any of the cameras, for the iPad that I have uh, typically mounted right here on the left. Um, handy to have, not critical, but certainly useful, especially on an extended flight. Just in front of me is the primary flight display. This is the most important piece of equipment and it's what I refer to most. Uh, that flight display there is a Garmin G500. It has synthetic vision. It gives me weather, traffic information. Uh, it replaces the classic six pack that would otherwise be present in the airplane uh, of the standard flight gauges. Really helps with situational awareness. Uh, it replaces the gyro instruments with an attitude and heading reference system or AHRS system for those that are aware. And it's the key part of the flight display avionics. Uh, off to the side is my favorite piece of equipment. Uh, this one here is the uh, Garmin GTN 750. It's my primary radios uh, as well as GPS, navigation, uh, and communications all within one. Inside of a GTN 750, you can find better videos online, uh, but you can see map, traffic, terrain, weather, and the best part about the flight, you know, frankly, in my opinion, is when you're flying and you want to pick up weather at your destination, you're outside of the range uh, that you would be able to hear it on the radio, you can use the weather key to know what the winds, uh, what the wind direction, uh, which, uh, you know, you can look at charts and plates in the procedure button. And so you can uh, really brief your whole approach in advance, in flight, uh, just by using the keys here on the GTN 750. This is a, uh, a Garmin GNS 530. Again, this is my secondary comm, secondary nav, uh, GPS. Uh, this is basically a backup for my uh, primary navcom, which is the GTN 750. Uh, also not shown, GDL 88 is Garmin's ADS-B. This plane is equipped with ADS-B as um, all planes should be at this point with the new mandate. Uh, the GTN 750 also has uh, a Flightstream 210, also Garmin. And what Flightstream 210 allows me to do is do a flight plan on my iPad at home uh, have everything briefed, weather done, have the whole plane and all the waypoints built in here, come and immediately transfer that over to the plane so I don't have to sit here on the ramp with the engines running, uh, inputting the flight plan. Uh, you know, it's not fail-proof. Um, certainly, if your clearance is different from the uh, than your flight plan, then you need to come in and make changes. Uh, but being able to have the plan made, programmed in on the iPad, and then transferred over when you arrive at the plane is super handy to have. There is a also a Garmin GDL uh, 69 uh, XM receiver, and I've got XM radio down here, which I have not gotten comfortable using yet. I uh, prefer to be listening to the radio and keeping my focus there. But for those of you that uh, that like XM music, it can we can use that for this. But the primary reason would be XM satellite weather. Off here to the side, we've got JPI. EVM 830 uh, engine monitors. Uh, the main benefit of these is it gives you all of your cylinder head temperatures, your exhaust gas temperatures, your fuel flows, fuel remainings, gallons per hour, manifold pressure, outside air te temperatures, percent horsepower, uh, oil temperatures, oil pressure. It gives you all of the information you need to know 
cylinder by cylinder for how your engines are functioning so you can quickly pick up on problems, make on the fly adjustments to keep your engines running with the best possible fuel economy at the proper temperature with it improved efficiencies and what that all translates to is uh, a healthier engine and a longer life to the engine uh, you're just you know not not causing as much damage to the engine by running them correctly below that we have some analog gauges again with my rpm manifold pressure fuel flows and exhaust gas temperatures uh, this is just redundancy uh, as a backup to what we see here in the digital gauges similarly we've got fuel gauges oil pressures oil temperatures and cylinder head temperatures uh, up top again with a, a secondary indication. Off to the side we've got suction and alternator as well as below here we have uh, all the circuit breakers, heater controls, uh, a, uh, a DC power, here I've got my Hobbs meter, and then all my de-ice and alternator switches here. So here's the alternator breakers, windshield heat, surface de-ice, prop de-ice, and pitot heat. Um, one of the reasons that we uh, look so strongly at this particular plane is because of uh, all the de-ice capabilities. All the lights are shown down here, and my magnetos are off to the left with the starter. Throttles, prop, and mixtures here in the center. Uh, below you can see flap settings and flap controls, gear indicator lights, gear here, and then uh, climate control stuff there below. Right up the center, uh, this is not modified, this is standard Aztec. We've got fuel left and right, we've got inboard and outboard tanks, we've got the cross feed, we've got the pressure cross feed drain, and we have the cowl flaps, two knobs there, uh, multiple settings uh, just to control uh, engine temperatures. So there it is, there's the setup for the avionics and equipment uh, inside of my Piper Aztec. Hope you enjoyed. In regard to the camera setup, uh, we'll start right here up front, uh, inside the cockpit, inside the plane. Uh, we have three cameras inside the plane that are mounted and one camera that floats that the uh, usually the kids or Kelly use to get some video while we're in flight. Um, the first camera here is a Hero 9, second camera here is a Hero 8, and the Hero 8 is how we record our cockpit audio. Uh, a Hero 9 requires an external cage, which is an additional accessory. A Hero 8 you can plug directly into the camera. Uh, this is with an in-flight cam adapter with an audio plug. Uh, if you follow it down, you can see that, that is, uh, the headset plugs directly into it. Uh, and that's how we get our cockpit audio recording completed. Up above, for the panel, uh, we have another Hero 9 mounted and recording forward. Uh, which is this view right here. Uh, settings have been a bit complicated. I'll be sure to put them in a future video for those of you that wish to record in cockpit um, audio and video. Uh, but nevertheless, some screen flicker on the G500 has been problematic and has been difficult to solve, so I continue to work on that. Uh, but those are the three mounted cameras inside the plane. And then again, we usually have a handheld that floats for outside pictures. In regard to the cameras and cages themselves, here I've got the GoPro Hero 9 that we typically mount on the tail of the plane. Uh, it comes with, uh, it doesn't come with, but you can purchase aftermarket metal cage to ensure that it stays fixed. And then, uh, you know, the camera can't come out while in flight. Uh, similarly for the, uh, the GoPro Maxes that we use. We've got a full metal cage around the camera, screwed together, camera cannot break free in flight. And so we'll alternatively use a Max or a Hero 9 here, a Max or a Hero 9 here, depending on where we want the 360 footage. And then there at the tail of the plane, we use a Hero 9 forward facing uh, typically, typically in time-lapse mode for the undertail footage. have a GoPro Max uh, right here. has a camera on the front and a camera on the back, which gives you 360-degree views. Uh, the mount itself is a FlightFlix Rocksteady mount, um, all-metal construction, all-metal connectors, uh, and then uh, anytime there's a jam nut or a mounting screw, uh, Loctite to prevent it from loosening. 
At the rear of the plane, what we've got is a flight flick tie down mount, uh, which bolts right here onto the tie down uh, with a heavy cage around a Hero 9. And again, when you're connecting outside of a plane, make sure you use uh, an all metal connector, all metal brackets. Uh, we use Loctite for anything that screws in uh, and doesn't require a nylon lock nut. And then here, this is a nylock lock nut that is uh, more permanent. We just wanna make sure that always, 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 when you mount cameras on the outside of the plane, that there's no potential that it's able to come apart and you know fall. Keep in mind that anytime you're putting a mount on the plane, uh, if tools are used to install it, uh, the way that the regulations are written, uh, this would be a minor alteration to the aircraft. So the mount should be uh, installed and inspected by an appropriate uh, A&P mechanic. Uh, and in this case, this mount, this mount, and the tail mounts, all the exterior mounts, uh, will require a logbook entry to be technically legal. So. Have them installed by your A&P, request the logbook entry, and make sure that you are staying within compliance with the, uh, with the regulations. Um, in our instance, we do have the logbook entry, and I would encourage everybody to make sure you have them inspected and properly notated in the logbook before you go flying with any cameras mounted on the outside of the plane. So that's how we get our camera footage inside the plane. Hope you enjoyed and uh, continue to watch videos. Thanks.